Hello everyone, this is Hubert from Traveling with Hubert. Uh, this is the last video of our historic home and building tour uh, in America's Georgia. Uh, we will cover uh, homes 33 through 47 in this video. We have really enjoyed making this. Uh, it's an interesting uh, video to us. Hope it's interesting to you. Hope that you like the video. And if you do, uh, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, we invite you to do so. Uh, we uh, hope that you do. And, and you know that if you hit the little bell uh, it, when, when you subscribe that you'll get a notice every time we upload a new video and we're trying to do that once a, a week uh, on Saturday night or Sunday morning uh, if you have a comment please leave it down in the comment section of the video description if you know someone that likes homes likes travel videos uh, share this video with them and uh, as always, Kathy and I just wish you have a very, very blessed day. One of these down here was number 34, what, right? Yeah. They got that tall tour up, huh? But we can get there. Yeah. Number 26 and 27 this is going to be no and this is number 34 all right so yeah we need to go to the corner of college and lee number 28 yeah but that's to save us from having to drive back down this way for a while i don't yeah. even see number what did you say this oh i see number 34 yeah. and 33 hey uh -huh. 33 is just right right down there I can go down that way and come around, honey. Mm -hmm. So it's behind it. It's on uh, Jackson Street. Well, that's Jackson of Everton. You just have to go up to College Street, I guess. But I'm talking about the number 33. Because mm -hmm. you said it was over Bant. Well, this is 34, and it shows 33 right that away on the same side of the street. Oh, you I get think that's... Street. I think it's that white <coughs> one down there, honey. Yeah. Originally built about 1840 as a single-story cottage, this house had a second floor added in the 1880s and was again remodeled after being damaged in a fire in 1917, which destroyed its neighbors to the north. The Second Empire style, so-called because of the characteristic mansard roofs, were modeled after buildings during the reconstruction of Paris during the Second Empire reign of Napoleon III in the 1850s and 1860s. It is uncommon in the South as it was popular during a period in which few, few Southerners were building fine houses. This impressive structure the only local example of the style 
was built in 1867 by a wealthy physician from Baltimore whose descendants occupied it for over a century. The present front porch replaced a smaller one in about 1900. This large house built in 1906 is another good example of the classical revival style of the early 1900s. Past furlough, right there on the corner, is 38, 39, 40, and 41, almost in a row. That's good, honey. So you got 30, 31, and 32. Yeah. Okay. So I guess you can go back to Lee Street. Park on that side of the street. Yeah, I can park on the side there because people do it all the time. Yeah, when you turn up here by that house, you, that was number 35. The next door is number 36. And then across the street is 37. And then <laughs> the next street, starting at Furlow Street, is 38, 39, 40, and 41. So you got all these right here in a row. Yeah. These should be fairly easy to get, honey. Yeah, I think that one up there that's for sale is one, honey. Yep. That says number 35. 30. Well, yeah, it was 35, and then 36 is right next to it. This fine Greek Revival cottage, originally built in Oglethorpe, Georgia, around 1850 for Charles J. Malone, was moved a few years later to Americas after Oglethorpe was devastated by a yellow fever epidemic just before the Civil War. Malone sold the house to cotton planter and banker William J. Hooks following Mr. Hooks' removal to his plantation in 1882, it was sold to Captain John A. Cobb, who with his family occupied the home for almost a century. In the 1970s, it was sold to J. Emery Rylander, who implemented major renovations. Following the death of Mr. Rylander, the home was sold to Dr. Henry King Stanford, who served as president of both Georgia Southwestern State University and the University of Georgia. Hi. Yeah. Can you tell if that's one of them signs right down yonder or not? Anyway, 522 is, um, Tyler's, I mean, Lee Street is number, um, wait a minute, you see 35 and 36? That was number 36 right there. 37 is across the street right uh -huh. over there before you get, before that furlough street goes uh -huh. across here. You may be able to park on this side because yeah. On down on the other side, you got four in a row on this side. Okay. <coughs> but number 37 is the one across That's the right street. That's right there, honey. Yeah, yeah, that one is for sale, yeah. I'll just park over here and get it, honey. Mm
This house is a good example of the late Victorian Queen Anne style built in 1899. On the other side of each spur lobe, just might as well stop. You got 38, 39, 40, and 41. Looks like in a row. Yeah. Four of them. Between Furlow and Hill Street. This is the first one right here, honey. Yeah. Might as well park kind of down a little bit because you got four in a row. Yeah. There's number 38. Yeah, yeah, 38, 39, 40, and 41. This house was built around 1905 in the classical revival style after having been badly damaged by a fire in 1931. It was brick veneered and extensively remodeled in the prevailing colonial revival style by architect T.F. Lockwood for prominent local physician Dr. Herschel A. Smith. Built in 1892 for a local merchant, this house is another example of the Queen Anne style. The oriel window at the front left corner and the two-tiered portico are nice features. This antebellum cottage was built in the 1830s and enlarged some years later and displaced the Greek Revival style in such details as rectangular plan, columns, cornice, and pediment. Built in 1906 by prominent wholesale grocer G.W. Glover, this house is a beautiful example of the early 20th century classical revival style. Notable features include a full-width pediment portico with Corinthian columns, hanging balcony. The house was sold to business leader and planter Thomas B. Hooks in 1911, who with his family occupied the home for a quarter of a century. Subsequent owners included Dr. B.T. Wise and Dr. J.H. Robinson, who with their families resided, resided here for decades. Okay, when you go on past Hill Street, below Hill Street, and before you get to Bell Street, there's a 42 and a 43 across the road. I mean a 43, uh, yeah, a 42 and a 43. Yeah. It's easy, honey. They got a parking over here. <laughs> just... They're parking on the other side too, don't they? Yeah. So go past Hill Street down here. Dennis passed by, huh? He 
say anything, I'll tell them I'm a tax assessor. This is a charming Lake Victorian cottage. It was built uh, in 1902. This Greek Revival cottage was built around 1850 with square columns and dental corners. The present windows are from the early 20th century. I know you just saw that one, didn't you? Yeah, she spoke, honey. I had to speak back. Yeah. Well, I guess I had to, but... So you got these two? Yeah. Okay, when you go past this um, Bell Street and... <clears throat> Now when you go till you get to Dodson Street, and there's going to be one on this side of the road, number 44. Yeah. Right there on the corner of Lee and Dodson. You wouldn't think way back in the day I had a brick house, did you? Oh, it? yeah, I think that was a big thing. If you were really wealthy, if you yeah. had brick. Well, no, it just meant I you know. could. <laughs> anyway, that's that one, and you just don't have another one until you get way down there and glister at the red light. This house is a good example of the craftsman style popular in the United States from the first decade of the 20th century through the 1920s. This particular example is somewhat unusual in having been built of brick with a tile roof. Mm -hmm. 44, huh? Here's Glasner. Yeah. yeah. So, is it that house right there? I don't see a sign. 
it's on the corner of Glasner and Lee, or it may be the next one to it. No, maybe it's that one. Yeah, that's it, huh? That's it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how to turn around, huh? One that needs a lot of work. Yeah. Well, here, here's the number 46. Yeah. Do you see it? So that's one right there, honey, I think. Huh? Is that one right back Across there? Across from Bivens, on the other side of Bivens Street, and this is Bivens. Yeah. And that little house right back here is always the one I yeah. can see. It's real tiny. Yeah. I wish it'd come up for sale, honey. Huh? I think the last time I saw it, it was like 50 something thousand dollars. I still wish it'd come up for sale, huh? Yeah. I think I looked it up one time. I think it was, was it one bedroom, one bath or something. Yeah. It's kind of private. Yeah. It's just okay. right for us, huh? Church, and he walked back down here. It's just right, right here. Huh? Well, this is a lawyer's office. I mean, no, not a lawyer's office, but I don't guess you have any places down there to park. Do you? No, the church is right. Oh, it's right parking up yeah. here at the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So you got that one, and then one down yonder. Yeah. Okay. I guess you can walk some more and get some exercise. Yeah, they make me better off, huh? And so that's number 45 and 46. Yeah. And number 47 is McGarrah over yeah. on the other side of town, and that's all I'm in it. Yes. Okay. This is a Queen Anne style at its most picturesque with shingle walls, brackets, spindles, and multicolored window panes. This house was built about 1890. This house was built in the 1860s, but heavily remodeled about 1912 through 1914. Note the cast concrete block masonry, the massive entablature, and the extensive grounds. Normally, you'd be able to go straight on South Lee Street. We can't do that, so we're going to have to make a detour.
This great revival raised cottage style home was built in 1833 for James Peter Geary, a judge, state representative, and planter. The house contains eight rooms with center halls and has 12 fireplaces. All the floors and the glass in the house are original. An outside staircase leads to the upstairs. 14 artesian wells are on the property, which originally was called Spring Hill Plantation, listed on the National Register of Historic Places since 1984. The house is the oldest original home in America.